In this nugget, we're going to take a look at DHCP services under the microscope of Wireshark. Let's begin. Isn't it amazing how we take some things for granted? For example, DHCP, the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, a computer, for example, Bob's computer, when he boots it up in the morning, very likely that computer is asking for help, saying, hey, I would love to find a DHCP server out there who can hand me my IP address that I need to survive and work on this IP network. And the first step of a traditional DHCP process is Bob sending out a discover packet, which is a broadcast sent to everybody else inside of that VLAN. If there is a DHCP server or some device acting as a DHCP server, the DHCP server can send an offer over back to Bob. So the offer is going to include information such as, hey, here's a beautiful IP address. I think you'll love it. It also has additional details regarding the mask involved and other options are available for that client. After Bob's PC gets that offer, if it wants to take it, it'll go ahead and request it, which is a message going back to the DHCP server saying, I love it. Thank you so much. I'm going to take this IP address that you gave me. And that's our third packet in a typical DHCP exchange. And to finalize it, the server is going to send an acknowledgement. And the acknowledgement is simply a confirmation that the DHCP server knows that this IP address that it offered is now being leased to Bob's PC. In that acknowledgement, it will also contain the options involved, such as the default gateway that Bob's PC can use, the DNS server information that Bob's PC can use, and other details that are being provided through DHCP. The packets that are going back and forth are carrying UDP at layer 4. And when Bob's PC makes a request, it's going to be using the source port of port 68. So UDP port 68 on Bob's PC. And on the server side, it's going to be using UDP port 67. So for the request, it'd be going from port 68 to port 67. And for the offer coming back, it would be UDP source from port 67 going back to UDP port 68. So what you and I get to do, we'll go ahead and lab up a quick DHCP server. We'll make R2 a DHCP server. And then we'll have R1 act as a DHCP client by using the command IP address DHCP in interface configuration mode right here on R1. And then we can look at the full conversation of DHCP between R1 acting as a DHCP client and R2 acting as a DHCP server. We're going to begin by making R2 a DHCP server. To do that, we're going to go into configuration mode and use the command IP DHCP pool, and we'll create a pool called our dash pool. Let's specify the network address range that this DHCP pool can hand out, and we'll do that with the network command using 10.0.0.0 with a 24-bit mask, which effectively means we can hand out IP addresses from that subnet. We're also going to hand out a default gateway, a default router, that a DHCP client can use if it ever needs to reach an IP network that's beyond its directly connected 10.0.0 network. Name resolution is also important, so as part of our DHCP, we can hand out the option of a DNS server. And the syntax to include that on a Cisco router running DHCP services is DNS-server, and then the IP address of the DNS server you want the client to use. So we'll use 8.8.8.8, .8 .8, which is a Google DNS server. The default lease time on many Cisco IOS routers acting as DHCP servers is one day. If we want to change that, we can specify lease space two, which represents two days. And there are other options we could configure, but for our demonstration, that'll be great. So we'll exit out of DHCP pool configuration mode. The other thing that we can do is specify a subset of IP addresses that we do not want this DHCP server to hand out. And to do that, we could use the command IP DHCP excluded dash address, and then the range of addresses that we do not want to hand out. In this case, we're not going to hand out 10.0.0.1 all the way through 10.0.0.24, which would mean our first possible IP address this DHCP server, R2, could hand out would be 10.0.0.25. And then we could type in exit or end to remove ourselves from configuration mode. And I'm a big believer of doing small verification checks as you and I go through these tasks. So let's issue the command show IP DHCP pool here on R2. So there's the name of our pool that we created. Based on the network statement, we have 254 possible addresses on the 10.0.0 subnet. However, we've excluded 24 of those. And that's because we said, please exclude dot one all the way through dot 24. And at the moment, we currently have zero leased IP addresses, and that's because we don't yet have a DHCP client. So our next step is to start our capture. So let's go to our GNS3 topology. We'll right-click on the link between R1 and R2. We'll say Start Capture and click on OK. 
And now with the router consoles, let's go back to R1, who's going to be acting as a DHCP client. And on R1, to configure the Ethernet 1 slash 0 to act as a DHCP client, all we need to do is go into configuration mode for that interface and say IP address DHCP, and that is it. It'll do the DHCP discover, and hopefully, if there's a DHCP server listening, we'll have those four packets involved, and R1 will successfully get and start using its own DHCP delivered IP address. And based on this console message, it appears that we got on our Ethernet 1 slash 0 an IP address of 10.0.0.25 assigned via DHCP. And here on R1, if we issue the command show DHCP server, here it confirms that we had an offer, we made a request, and we received an acknowledgement. Here's the DNS server information that we've learned via DHCP. And here's the mask we're using associated with the IP address that we received. We should have also received a default gateway. And to verify that, we can do a show IP route. I'm going to use a pipe symbol and say, please go ahead and begin at the word gateway. So here we have a default route. We learned this default route via DHCP. So it appears to be good to go. In our Wireshark capture, if we wanted to go to the very first packet, we could use this icon right here to go to the very first packet. And down here in packet 10, I can see that we have some DHCP related traffic. If we wanted to do a display filter and show only the DHCP traffic, we simply use the display filter of boot P. That's like the great grandfather protocol of DHCP. Press enter and that will show us just DHCP related traffic. And if we wanted to clear that display filter, we simply click on clear and now we can see all of the packets. So starting off with packet 10 here, if we expand some of the details for this packet, here's the layer two information. It's sourced from its MAC address that's associated with Ethernet 1 slash 0, and it's being sent as an Ethernet broadcast in the hopes that there's some device on that network that can respond to this DHCP discover packet. If we expand the layer 3 information and take a look at that, here it's showing us that the source at layer 3 is all zeros. And that's because our client, R1, doesn't yet have an IP address associated with it. And the destination layer 3 address is a layer 3 broadcast which is 32 ones in binary. It also indicates in the IP header that the next protocol is UDP, which is protocol number 17. And the layer four information for UDP shows the source port as being 68 coming from R1 and the destination port is 67. And that's because with DHCP, the client side port is gonna be 68 and the server side port will be 67. So we're sending off this DHCP discover to the well-known server port in hopes that we'll get some type of a response. And then below that, we have the actual payload. This is our bootstrap protocol. And that again is like the great grandfather name for DHCP. And this mentions that it is a discover packet being sent. I'd also like to show you in this request, if we take a look at the boot P flags here, that the flag for broadcast is on. And not every client is going to set that bit to on. A Cisco router acting as a DHCP client does. And effectively, what that means is all four packets of the DHCP, the discover, the offer, the request, and the acknowledgement are all going to be sent to the broadcast address. And we can see that's true up here. Here we have our discover, there's the offer, there's the request, and the acknowledgement. And all of those are being sent to the layer three broadcast address, which is going to correspond to a layer two broadcast address as well. Now this next packet, packet number 11, is very interesting. This is an ARP request that's being sent from the DHCP server. That's the MAC address of the DHCP server. And it's doing an ARP request saying, hey, who has the IP address for 10.0.0.25? I'd like to know what the layer two address is. And the reason it's doing that, this DHCP server is hoping to avoid the problem where it's about to hand out an IP address that somebody else already has. Maybe somebody statically configured it, if the ARP resolution is successful, the DHCP server will then continue to ping that IP address and a response from that confirms that somebody else already has that IP address and this DHCP server should not hand out that exact IP address because if it does, there will be a conflict on the network with two devices having the same IP address. Now because nobody on this little topology we have, nobody has that IP address of 10.0.0.25, there was no ARP response, the DHCP server then went on with the DHCP offer to hand out that IP address to the DHCP client. So if we take a look at the offer packet, which is packet number 12, it's being sourced from R2, which is acting as the DHCP server, and it's being sent to the broadcast layer 2 address as well as the broadcast layer 3 address. This offer is UDP based. The source port is 67, which is the server well-known port for DHCP, and it's being sent to the port 68, 
which is the well-known port for DHCP clients. Inside of this offer, it's offering the IP address of 10.0.0.25. And if you and I scroll down a little bit further, it's also handing out details including the mask associated with the IP address. There's our 24-bit mask. It's also handing out the details regarding the default gateway or default router that the client will be able to use if it accepts this IP address, as well as the DNS information. It's also right here, all included in the offer. And I realize in many texts that it mentions that these additional options are included in the acknowledgement, which is the very last step of DORA, the four steps in DHCP. And that is true, but you should also be aware that they're also included here in the initial offer from the DHCP server. Then in packet number 13, we have the request where the DHCP client is saying, great, I love this, I'll take it. And our fourth step of a traditional DHCP exchange here in packet number 14 is the acknowledgement. And once again, inside the acknowledgement, we have the additional details regarding the default gateway, the DNS server it can use, the mask involved, the actual IP address the client can go ahead and use. And as a result, the DHCP server is gonna keep track that it has handed out that IP address and if we issue the command show IP DHCP binding, it'll show us the details regarding what IP addresses it's handed out and to whom. We'll go ahead and save this capture from this nugget as IPv4 DHCP. And that'll be available as part of the Nugget Lab files. Also in this nugget, I wanted to share with you what the unicast option looks like with DHCP. So to do that, in GNS3, I simply added this virtual PC to the topology and I connected R1 to the hub, R2 to the hub, and the PC to the hub, so this virtual PC could also make DHCP requests. Once I started this PC, I then right-clicked on it to go to the console for that virtual PC. And the console looks like this. So I typed in IP space question mark to give me the context-sensitive help inside of the virtual PC, and it had the option after IP to use the command DHCP. So that's what I typed in, IP space DHCP, and that caused the PC to go through that process. So it went through the discover process, got the offer, made the request, and then it received an acknowledgement from the DHCP server, and it was given this IP address with this default gateway. Now it just so happens that this virtual PC, when it sends the DHCP discover packet, it does not set the broadcast bit to on. And it just so happens that I captured that while it was occurring, and we'll save it as the name IPv4 DHCP with no broadcast flag set. And that will also be available for you as part of the Nugget Lab files. And as we take a look at the packets here, in the initial DHCP discover message, if we open up the details for that, for the flags, because it did not set the broadcast flag to on, it's expecting unicast messages to come back from the DHCP server instead of broadcast messages. Because in our request, we are sending our source MAC address so in the replies from the DHCP server, it can include that destination layer 2 address and get back to that PC, even before the client has an IP address that it can use from the DHCP server. So even before the client is getting an IP address that it can use, it's still looking for and listening for any Ethernet frames destined to its MAC address. So if we go down to packet number 23, here's the offer. And I'd like you to notice that the offer is being sent specifically to the MAC address of the client. It also has, in the layer 3 header, the IP address that's being offered, even though at the moment, the virtual PC is not yet using that layer 3 address. But it will get that offer. And then in packet 24, we have the request from the PC saying, yes, I would love that IP address, I'd like to take it. And then our fourth packet, which is the DHCP acknowledgement, which again is being sent to the MAC address of the client who's requesting the IP address. So the client-side packets are going to be broadcast but the replies coming back from the DHCP server are gonna be unicast to the layer two address of the DHCP client. And I wanted to have captures of both sets so you could compare and contrast the two. In this nugget, we visited the process for obtaining a DHCP address from a DHCP server. We labbed it up and looked at the details of those exchanges using Wireshark. I have had a great time in this nugget. I'm glad you joined me for it. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.